Hello, my soccer universe. Well, I decided to go with the Czechs because they make the first upset of this tournament. Um, and yeah, it was one that, you know, did not come entirely unsurprisingly, but you know. Uh, if you go by ranking and whatever the people thought, uh, was maybe the first big surprise. But in any in any in case, whenever the Dutch play against the Czechs, there is a chance that the Czechs will do it. I think the Czechs have only against the big nations, they only really have against the Dutch a positive um, head to head. Uh, and yeah, how often will I be able to wear the Czechs? I thought that in 96 too. I mean, not that I had a Czech church back then, but uh, how often will I see the Czechs? And then they made it all the way to the final. So, you know, it's not beyond them to do some damage. They're good at the Euros usually, so uh, let's see. Also out are the holders in Portugal. Of course, the Dutch, my other favorite nas national team. But in many ways, I'm not too unhappy. Uh, as I, especially for the Dutch, I actually hope that there's a revolution coming. I mean, my favorite scenario would be that Ronald Koeman gets a relief of his duties at Barcelona, goes back to the Dutch FA and Frank de Boer at least can stay on as an assistant, but he should not be in charge of this national team anymore. I think he missed there as well. Um, and I think also Portugal should look for an, a, new, a new coach to really unlock all this attacking potential. And I would have the perfect coach, unfortunately he signed for Roma, but I think Jose Mourinho should take over the uh, Portuguese national team. I think this is where he could really excel. And yeah, I think it would be a perfect appointment in many uh, ways. Uh, speaking of that game, I think it was a pyrrhic victory for Pel Belgium in many ways. However, they finally got a dirty win. I mean, uh, they won similar to how France won against Belgium in the semi-final in 2018. Too much talk already. Let's get into, into the games. I mean, it's the Dutch against the Czech. This was such a <laughs> weird, game in many ways that turned completely in one minute. I mean, the first half, yes, the Dutch were, had a bigger initiative. Overall, the Czechs defending very resolutely and tight at the back. However, whenever I saw the Dutch, it just did not seem to gel going forward. Yes, they tried to move forward, but it was all individual efforts. It was They were never really playing that well as, as, as a team. I always had the feeling that the uh, you know, it needs to be some individual brilliance that we'll see the, the Dutch through. And uh, for the one thing that they have been studying, there's not too much brain. I mean, yes, it would have not come because of offset, but remember this one, the free kick, and then the Licht makes this towering header right at the post where there's no goalkeeper in. And he heads it back. He should have headed this into goal. I mean, uh, you already could see that there's something not right about And there's few attacks where you just cannot find the, uh, the, the other attacker that will help you out. So it was not much going wrong, but it was pretty clear that um, also the Czechs, when they went forward, they were really, really um, dangerous. There was a big chance for Barak that was cleared. Uh, I, I think it was the Licht, uh, but also um, I think um, Suchek had a header. So when the Czechs were forward, I always thought that they're actually more dangerous than the Dutch, although the Dutch have way more possession and way more are way more active in the game, but it just didn't gel very well. And then, as I said, it turns, and I think it was the 56-second minute, when Depay plays the ball to Marlon, who puts on the turbo boost, goes past two Czech defenders, put Potentially there was a foul there, but um, we, we, we don't know. Uh, is free ahead of the goal, 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 and then wants to make it too fancy. He wants to go around the keeper, and the keeper has only eyes for, for the ball. Great save and punches it away from him. I honestly have to say, I mean, I, 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 I was looking at it. Yes, he wanted to play it safe, but you know, take a shot. Maybe go uh, around the other side, or um, he over... Uh, he puts too much weight on the touch where he wants to go past the goalkeeper, which allows him to go past. But this makes the goal there and the Dutch are going through. And then uh, basically on the reverse, the ball comes, the Licht should clear it. Schick puts a little bit of pressure in and, and the other, and, the, and there you saw it again, that um, the Dutch defense is, is also saying, yeah, the Licht will do it, the Licht will do it. I mean, they barely come, come back. Only when he stumbles, you see suddenly Blind coming also back. Uh, and while falling, the Licht, of course, realizes that yeah, if he lets the ball go through, Schick is through and goal and will score. 
Poole pushes away. It gives a clear free kick and it is a clear red card. They needed VAR for, for that, but it was a pretty clear uh, decision. And from that moment on, the checks were better. And they should have scored maybe, maybe earlier, but then Holesch uh, gets the goal. Uh, it was really ni ni nice way how it comes. I think a free kick, then a, a header back uh, from Carlos, and then Holesch heads it in. Uh, it was very well played goal, and Holesch is one of those really weird stories. Remember when the Czechs couldn't play because they had so many COVID cases, they had to make a second team. Holesch was in the team, and he hasn't left, le left the Czech squad since. So, and he scored, goes for the first goal. And then, you know, the Czechs could play it relatively easily home. There was not much come come from Dutch, and I even have to say the exchanges for the Dutch. I mean, why do you take off Marlin, who was way better than Depay? Almost nothing that was happening made sense what the Dutch were doing, and so it was only clear that uh, the Czechs were closer to a second goal, which she gets then another nicely played ball. So, yeah. The Dutch are out, the Czechs are through, and yeah, on that red card, the game turned because it was maybe slightly tilting more towards the Dutch, although I said the way that the Czechs were defending uh, and then being dangerous going forward, forward, forward was already impressive. I always had the feeling that they, they have a more, they're more complete team, not like the Dutch, they, who is all individuals in individuals. And then if uh, Ronaldo uh, has an off day, not gonna happen. The other game also turned on a single scene, uh, and yeah, I'm so glad we are done with Sevilla. This is this was the worst stadium of them all, and I don't want to see a game in Sevilla ever. That that stadium needs needs to be nuked, or just no games ever, no football games ever played there again. I don't know why they they have so they, even within Sevilla they have too much better stadiums. We actually could have a home field with advantage if we were spamming. I don't get it. Uh, much was expected from Belgium against Portugal. I mean, this was the marquee matchup. Yes, by name it is England, Germany. I get it. But if I look at the teams and the talent present, the teams, Belgium, Port Portugal takes the um, pot there. Uh, I mean, just look look at the forward line for Belgium. Hazard, Lukaku, De Bruyne. I promise De Bruyne already a little bit injured. Hazard, a little bit injured. Witzel uh, in, in injury, so they kind of needed to get themselves going. And then if I look at what uh, Portugal with Ronaldo, Diego Jota and uh, Bernardo Silva, I mean, that's pretty special. Uh, but the game was not. It was a rather boring first half with not much happening. I mean, uh, there was, uh, I think, um, was, was it... Um, uh, not the law. Uh, it was Meunier who tried to channel his inner, uh, his inner Modric. It went over. Uh, I think there was a free kick by Ronaldo. One of the few good ones that he takes. I mean, that's the one thing. Ronaldo should be away from any free kick. Portugal, Juventus, wherever. He's not good at it. Yes, he scored an amazing one against Spain in 2018. But that was it. He is. He sucks. He positively sucks. Ronaldo is... One of the greatest players to ever play, but he positively sucks at free kicks. Never should be near any free kick. Um, in any case, um, just when you thought that the game goes kind of towards a nil-nil at the half, which probably will be the fair result, uh, Meunier plays the ball over to Torgan Azar, who takes a shot and the uh, swerve kills uh, Patricio. Absolutely kill, kills him. You can see when the shot is taken, he makes a jump to his right because it seems like the ball is going to the left and then it takes a swerve and goes in the center of the goal. I mean, yes, goalkeeping mistake. However, uh, can you judge such a swerve? It was rather, rather weird. Second, uh, another crucial incident was that there was a foul at the Bruyne just before the half, which got a Paulinha um, uh, yellow card. And right after the half, this was enough to take the Bruyne off. He said, no, nah, I can't do it anymore. And as I said, pure quick victory. I mean, you still have kind of the others a little bit. Uh, uh, you have already Aiden Azar, not super fit now. De Bruyne not looking good. And there goes all your brilliance up front. Yes, there's Lukaku, who is a uh, freight train. But that might not uh, bear out well for the rest of the tournament. For the sake of the tournament, I actually really hope that De Bruyne comes back because he's a wonderful player, the same as Azar. Um, I really, if Belgium was eliminated, I would rather see it in a full squad at full strength 
than this kind of yeah, uh, limited squad of uh, Belgium. So yeah, it also was about to get a little bit testy in many ways, but it never really exploded. I think a goal would have maybe exploded the whole thing, but it was not coming. Portugal had chances. Um, I think there was a header by Ruben Dias who should, should have come in. Ronaldo, again, playing great, but uh, get away from free kicks. Um, I also think that, um, who was it? Uh, yeah, um, uh, Rafa Guerrero hits the post with a great shot. Uh, and later on, uh, Diego Jota has a big chance. They just cannot con con uh, convert it. And then Belgium, I don't know what they were studying ta tactically, but uh, in the last 10 minutes, they had two clear counter attacks where either they cannot play the last pass perfectly or at least for one I think they at least were uh, killing time because of dribbling around in the box but the second time I mean if you're already in the 9-9 stop shot, go for the corner flag if you don't want to score and if you want to score play it better but uh, if you see this out go to the corner flag don't try to go to goal technically Belgium was also not good I actually think uh, it is not unreasonable to assume that Italians uh, would be favorites now if they play Belgium. So I have had to say Belgium goes through with a crazy goal and not necessarily as the better team. That uh, I think Portugal maybe on the day was a little bit better, uh, but Belgium grounded out somehow. Yes, Courtois, they probably have the better goalkeeper on the day and that was that. And so yeah, with those we have now the bracket. We know already two quarterfinals with Belgium against Italy in Munich. I think that's a very enticing one. I actually think there might be quite some Italian fans because Munich is full with Italians. And in Baku with the Czechs against the Danes. Remember quarterfinal in 2004? That was that. That was where the Czechs just rolled over the Danes. Let's see if the Danes can get revenge there. As for expected bracket, of course, with the Netherlands going out, there is some changes because now the Danes would make it all the way to the semi-final in London. Um, other than that, again, no changes because all the favorites always went through. But yeah, um, saying that, seeing Denmark in the semi-final after what they've been showing uh, doesn't seem too unreasonable, to be honest. Also, big changes in the favorites. Belgium is up, but because now Belgium is playing Italy, Italy goes down, Denmark stays in second place. Also that they don't have to play the Dutch, so this actually boosted the Danes' chances. The Czechs are in the sixth spot, uh, also moving far up, um, and England and France are a little bit behind. Of course, uh, everyone, because there have been uh, teams eliminated, uh, Ukraine, Switzerland and Croatia uh, move up a little bit, uh, even Germany, because now the Dutch fall out. So that uh, those green slots are maybe not as uh, telling. Today, two very interesting, uh, one very interesting and one I think will be rather one-sided. Croatia against Spain, I actually sense an upset, even though Perisic will not be playing for COVID reasons, but I think that Croatia would have enough quality to hurt Spain. They either lose big or they win against them tightly. So um, let's see. France, Switzerland, and you know, this is the same thing what I said for it Italy, Austria. I cannot see Switzerland doing anything against France. The only thing that is a, a, a danger for France is their own complacency. But let's see if they will take this game serious or not. But I would expect France. Uh, maybe not by a scoreline, but by the overall feeling of the, of, of the game that France will dominate this game and go rather easily through it. So yeah, let me know what you thought about yesterday's games, how you see the bracket and all the other uh, games uh, panning out. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my uh, channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.